Also, there's a troubling trend across the Portland metro area. This week, our news partners at Willamette Week are taking a closer look at illicit massage parlors. Now, those parlors are illegal and are part of sex trafficking organizations that use undocumented women who have been trafficked from other countries. Their reporting found that in 2019, Portland had 36 of those parlors. This year, that number has tripled. Joining us to talk about the article is Willamette Week News Editor Aaron Mesh. As always, Aaron, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. Let's talk about this. How do people end up trafficked here into Portland and then these parlors? So the women who are um, stuck in these parlors, in these businesses, uh, often come from China uh, and are often promised work in the United States. Um, by people who then turn out to not be telling them the truth about what kind of work they'll be doing. Now, let's be very clear. These massage parlors, quote unquote, are offering more than massages. They are offering uh, manual sexual release to, to customers, to Johns who come to these businesses. And uh, many of the women who uh, end up working in these places uh, are paid very little, uh, do not speak the language, uh, and don't have any uh, ties in the community that would allow them to escape the places that where they're employed. Uh, someone who works for the massage board says that, I believe he had the number at 72% of the women who are working in these places uh, are, that he's investigated, are living inside the very uh, businesses where they work. Aaron, so that's the problem. What's being done about it right now? Short answer, nothing. So you have uh, in other cities in Oregon, you have new licensing requirements that are being set up that would force the operators of these parlors to appear before a city council uh, and show their faces before they're granted licenses and prove that the people who are working for them have valid massage licenses. In other words, are actually trained masseuses. Uh, they're doing that in Scapoose. They're doing similar things like that in Lake Oswego. They're doing crackdowns in Lake Oswego and in other cities in Portland. Nothing. Crickets. Uh, we reached out to the police bureau, reached out to the mayor, uh, have not heard anything other than that they are quote unquote investigating, but are, not willing to discuss what they've found. Are, are these parlors having an impact on the, on the nearby neighborhoods, Aaron? Oh, absolutely. So you look at a place like uh, a business operating off of Sandy Boulevard in Northeast Portland on Northeast 58th Avenue. That's a residential neighborhood, quiet streets, people uh, park on the street and a little bit on yards. And suddenly there are LED lights all night and men arriving on the doorstep of this business uh, at all hours. Um, and the, the neighbors who call the uh, city hotline, the federal, sex trafficking hotline find that they're not getting any response i would imagine there i know there are a lot of legitimate industries out there what kind of issue does this create for them well you know for one thing obviously like actual massage businesses uh i'm sure are very tired of of being tagged with a with a, uh, a smear that comes from the these kinds of illicit massage parlors you know there's also a very interesting kind of competitive advantage that these uh, these businesses have over what are known as lingerie shops. So lingerie shops are places where men will often go to watch uh, women perform in shows. And those shows are fairly expensive uh, and the massage parlors are fairly inexpensive and it's driving the lingerie businesses out of business. Aaron Mesh, as always, great to see you. You know, I'm very excited that I can come on here before Blazers games in the future. I'm more than willing to offer the prop bets and tell you exactly who I think is going to score more than 30 points on a given night. But, you know. Hey, as long as you wear your Blazer gear, you're always welcome. I want you to know that. Oh, good. All right, Aaron, thank you. You can read the entire article in the latest edition of Willamette Week on newsstands now or online at wweek.com.